Welcome to Living Fuel TV. I'm Casey Crazy. My special guest, Andy O'Brien. Andy, welcome. Casey, thank you. Andy is an elite uh, strength and fitness coach out of, uh, where in Canada? Calgary. Calgary, Canada. He, he runs a $40 million training facility in Calgary, Canada. He, he is a trainer of champions, literally. And it's sure, sure awesome to have you back with us. My pleasure. It's great to be here. Yes. Um, today, let's talk about what the viewers could do you know you know you work with elite athletes who are trying to go from an incredible place that a lot of us will never get to to a place that no one's ever been yeah you know but fitness matters uh strength and fitness matters to everyone we know that people that do resistance training uh are the bones are stronger mm -hmm. that that it actually better for bone health and calcium supplementation mm -hmm. we know that Basically, all the results of exercise, if it were a pill, that people would pay any price for it. Mm -hmm. But people aren't mm -hmm. doing it because they can't drag themselves. So mm -hmm. in another segment, we talked about how you, know, you really got to get your metabolism back on track to get mm -hmm. the energy levels to be able to go to the gym and then work out. But, you know, they don't have to live in the gym, do they? No, you really don't. And that's where I think you can get uh, the most bang for your buck if your nutrition is, is really... Uh, if you're doing things right nutritionally, you know, your body's going to be able to adapt to every movement that you have. Whether you're playing tennis, whether you're playing soccer, whether you're going for a walk or going for a run or going to the gym, uh, you're gaining you know, some physiological benefits from that if you put the nutrition in your body to allow yourself to adapt to those activities. Uh, if you're not, you know, a lot of people, they spend so much time in the gym and they drag themselves in there every day and they train and train and train and train and, and all of us know these people, you know, very often they don't quite get the adaptations that they need or they don't get the changes that they want and it's because they're not really taking care of things on the nutrition side so if you if you're really uh, looking after your body from a nutrition perspective uh, you're gonna be able to meet those demands a lot easier and, and you're not gonna have to spend as much time in the gym well Monica you know we, we have a trainer come to Monica once a week mm -hmm. you know, really hard workout and the kids also once a week and she recovers nicely during the week she sometimes does some walks or, or runs or whatever during the week but really the the strength and fitness is one day a week, and she's in the best shape that she's been in since she won first in swimsuit at Miss USA. That's fantastic. It's amazing. So That's it's great. about you know committing a small block of time. You can really get a lot out of that, can't you? Oh, there's no question about it. You know, I think it's not necessarily about the volume of the work that you do. I think it's the quality of the work that you do, and then the things that you do away from that time. You know, that are really going to help you adapt. And every time you work out. You're trying to signal your body to create adaptations, to burn fat, to build muscle, you know, to become healthier, and to release, um, you know, a set of neurotransmitters, what we call it, uh, little chemicals from the brain that speed up your metabolism. And so, if you're providing yourself with the right type of fuel and you're doing the right things from a health perspective, you're going to be able to to maximize all those adaptations from every little workout. So once, twice, three times a week is going to go a lot further than even five or six times a week if you're not doing those little things to maximize the adaptations you're trying to put forth. We have all seen people doing an hour, hour and a half on the treadmill and for some mm -hmm. reason they don't look healthy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, something's up with that. You see it all the time and you know what, it's uh, really a lot of times we, we tend to think about body parts a little bit too much. So we think about cardio and then we think about, okay, here's your biceps, here's your back, here's your legs. But really what you're trying to do is you're trying to signal a response from your body, an overall global metabolic response. We're trying to get your nervous system to say, okay, you know, I'm trying to move here and I need to adapt and I need to change my body so that I can be more appropriate towards these movements. And so I think that's the part that not a lot of people understand and that's, that's where the nutrition really can provide a benefit. And when you understand the role that the nutrition plays, you really get into understanding Understanding the nervous system and understanding the whole metabolic process in the body. Yeah, you know, we talked about how not even really most of the elite a elite athletes even get nutrition, mm -hmm. and a lot of the strength and fitness coaches unfortunately are staying with the old dietetics kind of approach mm -hmm. that really mm -hmm. is trying to get everything from food. But we know you can't have a team of organic chefs even give you everything that you need. Of course. So, so you really gotta you really have to to, to take it on yourself to figure this out. Mm -hmm. But interestingly, these athletes. A lot of guys still think you have an hour and a half after you work out to do something nutritionally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, but, but the more you look at the literature, you see that window's closing back to even to 15 minutes. Of course. Of you course. know, to, to cut off the cortisol mm -hmm. and to uh, block the oxidation and so mm -hmm. on. So I think, I think that you're absolutely right. That people can gain tremendously by 
understanding the nutrition piece and then not trying to take off too big of chunks, right? Exactly. It's really not about quantity, you know, and like you said, the, the traditional models to look at amount of calories, amount of protein, you know, looking at all of those those traditional numbers without understanding the, the micronutrients, the antioxidants, and, um, and getting a bit of a feel for how to control the timing of the eating, which is really, really important. And again, that's what we're looking for, is we're looking for a hormonal and metabolic response that's going to make your body healthy. And so that's really where the nutrition can play a big role and from a timing perspective and from a micronutrient antioxidant perspective. Yeah, you, know, you said something huge there because most people listening or watching right now don't get that piece. Mm -hmm. and, and I'd say most people in general don't get that piece. They think they need X grams of protein a day. Mm -hmm. But what you really need is what comes out of the protein. Exactly. Or you need X grams of carbs a day. You know, and exactly. people have transferred sugar from a micronutrient to a macronutrient, which is a lot of the problem to start with. Absolutely. So, so you have these global nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, even, even fiber, but at the end of the day, it's what your body can extract from that and use in the body. 100%. 100%. In, a, in a very efficient way. So, so I'm working on something, and I believe I've shown that you could actually live on the micronutrition if you can deliver it in, a, in the right way. So if you, if you have someone, let's just say, let's just take the example of someone on a hospital bed. Mm -hmm. Okay, right now, they're giving them glucose, right? Mm -hmm. And so after, uh, let's see, 48 hours, the, the, the standard of care says they're going to change from glucose to protein-based uh, infusion, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And some people live on the glucose and they just waste muscle. This is, yeah, what, this is a course. microcosm of what's happening to a lot of people that are working mm -hmm. out. They mm -hmm. think they can just do the carbohydrate thing and carbo load the night before and mm -hmm. all these other things mm -hmm. and somehow at the end of the day that's going to create muscle and, and all the hormonal processes you mm -hmm. just talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting and I think that, that hormonal piece you know, is very poorly understood especially as it relates to nutrition. One of the things that we try to tell our young athletes is uh, there's a, a real surge of sugar in uh, in the modern day diet in our society, you know, because everything's about making it quicker, faster, you know, a little bit more simple, cheaper, and uh, really start gravitating towards less whole foods and a lot more sugar-oriented foods with not a lot of nutrients. And well, so, I'll, I'll wrap this one, this segment up, because we're going to go sure. to another one. Okay. And saying that the Peak Performance Institute in London said that athletes are the fastest-growing population of the malnourished. Wow. Wow. Okay, because of reliance on some of these global nutrients. But anyway, fascinating stuff. We're going to come back to you again. Hope you enjoyed it. Here's to your super health and have a great day.